Hello folks. Hope you're having a good day and I hope you had a good weekend. I certainly did. It was a fun one. And I hope you're all doing very well. If you like what I do, the subscribe button is down below. The Patreon button is also down below. There are a few prize draws coming up for your inspection over the next few weeks. The first is on the 8th of October, this Sunday, and it is for £100 worth of free models, free anything that you want, really, from Composite Games, from the, from the store page, sent to you anywhere in the world. If you want to be in, involved in that, all you need to do is be a patron on the channel or support me financially uh, through being a member of the channel and you will get yourself an entry to that prize draw. The winner, as I just said, gets £100 worth of free models. Composite Games are also doing their own prize draw this month. A really cool one as well, by the, by the looks of things. Let me just whack it up here. Um, get it sorted out for you. There we go. There we go. Uh, so yeah, the Northern Exile Composite Games prize draws, that is, that is continuing on over the next few weeks, where you can uh, not only get yourself an entry to a prize draw, but you can help a top-notch store out there in the big wide world move location or upgrade their current location. They do have a goal there, and stretch goals are there as well, for more and more prizes over the next few weeks. All the information is in the doobly-doo doobly -doo down below, in the description down below. Go down there, have a little look at it, see if it's something that you want to do to help out a local store. So, let's get involved with the Hobby Nightmares, shall we? Because we've got three to do today, but one of them is several Hobby Nightmares in one. So we've got a lot to get through today. So, Doc Outlaw says, Hello North. This is Doc Outlaw. I've been kind of in a rut for a while, hobby-wise, and I need some help. I almost had my love for this hobby killed last night from a friend, I feel, who has taken advantage of my passion and creativity and has no gratitude towards any of it. Okay, no worries. Recently, I had a buddy of mine, let's call him Jester, tell me after I offered a 40k 10th edition battle that he is probably going to sell off most of his Warhammer models. I would not mind it only under one thing, really. I pretty much built most of most of the kit. Wow. Uh, almost model by model in that kit, except for the Master of Possession and the Venom Crawler. This was to start collecting Chaos Space Marines box set that went out of production last year, and about a quarter of the kit became unplayable. As Jester asked me if I can help him out with it. Of course, I had a lot of free time on my hands and obliged. Check out the attached uh, photos below, and did some work. All right, let's get into it, shall we? I think there's a, there's a few cool photos here. Uh, I believe that is a demon prince kicking a space marine in the face, which is very very funny. <laughs> there's more tearing in the background as well. Let's have a little look. We need to focus our cameras, folks. These are really cool models, and we can't really see them because of the camera work. I like it though. That's cool. That's cool. Pretty awesome. I like his domineering pose as well. Very Emperor's Children. Anyway, back to the hobby. Okay. Um, well, last night, while playing my Xbox, I hit him up and offered to set up a small game between him and I. I'll get the 10th edition rules and we'll play. Well, Jester then told me he's planning on selling... Uh, uh, okay. Well, Jes Jester then told me he's planning on selling his 40k minis because he feels like he's got no one to play with and the people he wants to play with don't want to play with him. Here's the problem also. Whenever we play, Jester just wants to play attrition battles, grind down the enemy whilst also trying to survive as well, but, but will then whine and complain that he always is losing and how my Death Guard or Custodes... I love durable, tanky, but slow-moving armies with a decent close-to-mid-range game and a brutal assault game. He'll moan that they are unkillable and feel unfair to play against. I even nerf myself and hold punches and uh, do not use my full army potential so as to make the battle feel more fair to Jester. Me and my other friend, let's call him Warboss, have been into this kind of stuff since we were kids and invited him into a community called High Desert Hobbies and also to a store called the Adventurer's Guild House. That's a really cool name for a store. It was a little neat store downtown from where I live and the folks in that community were great. I played a few fun and tense games with a few different people from the Guild House and made some friends there. Additionally, to this above point, 
Jester would constantly say how he wants to face off against more players and armies and get more experience. We invited him into those two communities we were in, they're actually joint communities but they act as two, and basically said, send out the memo you're looking for a game and want to learn to play, and that you have an army on hand ready to go. Now, I'm being told by Jester that he just wants to play with friends and not a bunch of random other players he doesn't know, quote unquote. What's that thing you say, North? A majority of this hobby and game is finding the right opponents. Uh, it is. It is. Yes. But maybe he thinks he's found the right opponents in you guys and he wants to, to just play with you. You know what I mean? Another issue with Jester is that he, for the lack of better terms, is a poor sport. In video games, he'd, hap he'd be all happy and entertained if he's winning. But if he's losing, or not being the one who's got main character status, he'll say the game was bullshit, or that the person that was winning was cheating, but uh, not bother trying to learn the game systems and mechanics. He basically lo he basically does the same thing in 40k. If he's not, uh, if, it's, if he's, if he's got some sort of fun, cool, and awesome advantage or advantages, he's having a blast. You take away one or multiple of those advantages, he's unhappy and whines about losing or feeling like he's been getting cheated or having to, de or having to deal with cheap tactics, but yet he will blatantly cheat by adding more movement than on his stat sheet and say he was advancing, things like that. Or, like I caught him once doing, flick his master of possession over by about two inches to place him behind cover, then whip out the measuring tape. Yeah, th th this seems like a guy who's not really built for the hobby, dude. This is not a guy who's built for the hobby. If he, th this is what I mean. <laughs> if he wants to leave, let him. It's no skin off your nose, man. It really isn't. Another problem is his lack of motivation towards the hobby, and part of why I'm writing this. You see, when Jester was still figuring out his army, Jester wanted to go with Chaos Space Marines. This was around late March, early April of last year, just after the Armour of Contempt update and around the time Chaos Space Marines were getting their 9th edition codex and a range of refresh and a new starter box. Start collecting was going away and becoming combat patrols. Me and Warboss kept recommending to Jester that if he were going to wait a few more weeks till the new combat patrol dropped and maybe another month for the 9th edition codex to, to drop, he'd be able to play and learn his army and get himself a real solid foothold in how to play. Jester doesn't really have the money for 40k to begin with and we were trying to help him save as much as he could. Instead of listening to our advice, he went and bought the soon to be out of production and obsolete start collecting box set. Notice the old possession models in the pictures. He and my friend uh, kept, me and my friend kept to ourselves about that because we were both finally happy that he got the army that he wanted and he got started. Well, guess who's the motherfucker, excuse my language, who basically just built 75% of that kit and painted about half of it. Yeah, me. I got nothing back except a thank you and a mention in a TikTok from him. Wow, thanks bud. And he hasn't played since, and I last played, uh, since he and I last played, which was on my 22nd birthday this past March. All right, I, I think the expectations in this in this friendship are way out of whack. All right, he started a hobby he's not really sure in. I don't think you have the patience to really nurture somebody into starting the hobby, right? Uh, I also think he's being a bit of a dick. Yes, he's having you paint all of his stuff and do all of his stuff, and then you know just drops the hobby. Bit of a dick thing to do. But then again, if you've not decided on a reward for you, like you're being paid or something, then you can't really expect blame him when he just does the bog standard stuff and gives you a thank you and sends you on your way. Do you know what I mean? Like, I work for commission a lot of the time. Not commission, but I, I charge people for my work a lot of the time. So if, I, if I'm editing a book, if I don't send that guy an invoice and say, listen, uh, you're going to owe me £700 when this, in, when this book is done, right? This will be £700 due on this date. If I don't give him an invoice, he can pay me whatever he thinks my time is worth. And everybody in the freelancing in the freelancing sphere, they always undervalue what you do. Always. I mean, hell, even I undervalue what I do. But I, I, if I'm doing it, I'll do it. I don't want you doing it or the customer, right? But if I don't give him that invoice, I can't then complain that he's coming back to me and undercutting me in terms of my fee. Because I didn't set out the parameters. I didn't set out the expectations. Expectations are really, really, really 
really important in 40k and getting and getting involved anyway I had a cousin come visit me at the guild house so I stepped out uh, to uh, out to kick it with him for a minute okay uh, I'm just gonna double check something here okay I had a cousin come visit me at the guild house, so I stepped out to kick it with him for a few minutes. I asked Jester not to play his turn yet when we were playing our game, as I was going to step out for like five minutes, then be back in. I come back in and see that Jester has pretty much moved and advanced his guys and already started sending shots my way. So I just packed up my shit, ended the game, said I wanted to go kick it with my cousin, when really I was irritated at what Jester did. During the setup phase, he oh so badly wanted this big altar piece in the center of the map, but the only way to get it get into it effectively and safely without your models falling was placed oh so conveniently on his side, and it was covered from all angles to where I'd have to pull a 7 to 8 to 10 inch charge to even try to get in there. Well, when I stepped back in, he basically said everything set up to where he got free uh, during angles and lines of sight on me whilst also being entrenched in cover while spamming mor the mortis rounds. This was pretty much my last game of 9th edition for quite a while. All my models, built, working progress, still on sprue and inbox, and supply and hobby supplies are basically sat in the big in the in the big tote. Is it in the big tote? Is that a big pile? In a big pile and a few smaller boxes and containers for the for the past few months. Just a few weeks ago, I had my first game of 10th and loved it. Iron Hands versus Custodes, which was me, and it was a blast. What do I do, North? I've honestly lost, and I don't. I've honestly lost all momentum, and I don't really know what to do. The other week, I had this hobby reinvigorated, but I built the rest of a force I've been working on. Then, basically, last night, got told that a buddy who I'd spent time, effort, and resources and energy on making his models look great are just now going to waste. Pretty much almost extingu extinguishing that motivation I suddenly found. Thank you for all you do, and cheers to the United States. Okay, um, here's the thing, man. You're putting far too much importance on what this dude um, is doing, right? Okay? Y you can be friends with somebody and not be into all the hobbies they're into. You can. All right? You can be friends with this guy. I've got friends who aren't into Warhammer. And when I discuss it, they go, oh my god, he's going on about it again. Right? And I've got friends who love Warhammer, who love talking about it with me and going over it and all strategies and lore and all sorts, right? So, I wouldn't really... I think you're putting far too much importance on what this guy is doing in your life, dude. I, I think you need to chill. You need to chill, step back, and realise you've solved your own problem. When you told me, most of the hobby is about finding your opponents. Well, this guy ain't for you so move on you obviously have other people like the guy who was playing iron hands who you have a really good time with focus on those people and just don't play this guy again no problem job done and move on but yeah you, you you put a load of time and effort into his models that he doesn't want anymore fine it's no loss off your nose now anyway you chalk it up to experience you move on and next time somebody wants you to paint their stuff just tell them hey you know i've had this happen to me before is this something you actually want, or are you just being lazy? You know? Lessons learned. Moving on. Right. Urch says, Hi North, you can call me Urch if need be. Well, I need to call you something. I got back into the hobby around the same time I found your channel. About a year ago. I settled on Dark Angels as I favour the nightly aesthetic and the colour green. I found that 40k slotted into my interests with being a lifelong reader, gamer and model builder. I am fortunate enough that my partner of 4 years shares similar interests as me. Mandala making, colouring books and Genshin Impact. This is even an in there is even an interest in painting 40k with me. Looks like that Sprue of Tyranids will finally get some love after all. The reason uh, behind me sending over this to you is the hobby and now and how family slash relatives react to it, okay? My immediate family is not judgmental. Everyone from mom, dad, and my two sisters have a creative hobby that they maintain. My dad would often remark, if you have a hobby, son, you will never feel bored and you'll be able to, to silence any thought of loathing or self-doubt. Wise man. 
wise man. My main issue lies with relatives who pop into my peaceful life with grandma every month or so. They moved to Florida some time ago and make time whenever they have work or personal matters to attend to. This is my mother's sister, my mother's sister and her family. Okay. These relatives enjoy taking pot shots at my living arrangement with my grandmother, including my hobby. The usual slights and comments start with the typical he is a bum living off his grandmother or he needs to move out. Right. Those aren't slights, dude. Those aren't slight slights. Alright. Those are people, even your family members, being cons, being absolute assholes, dude. That's what that is. Okay? That's not slight. Don't take that. Don't take that shit. Stamp on it. You can't choose your family, dude. Stamp on it. I even on several occasions went out to dinner with them. Why? Which I did out of civility. And the conversation always seemed to shift backwards to getting my own living space and telling me to dump my partner as she has baggage. She lives with and supports her two parents. Dude, okay. Before I go any further with this, right? Okay. There's only, there's only one type of people you want out of your life. It's them. Right? You can't choose who your family are, but you can choose who you spend time with. Just like our previous uh, messenger, you know, you need to take respons uh, responsibility for your own actions. If you're choosing to surround yourself with ass hats like this, and then they upset you, that's also your fault. You know what they are, and they're not changing. So move away. J just go, nah, I'm not spending time with them. Right? You're an adult, you're a big boy. So, no, no. I can spend my time with whoever I want, and I don't want to spend it with these people, okay? The amount of problems I've solved in my own family over the years by just cutting them out for a while. By just going, nah, nah, I'm done. Nah, I'm done. Bye. No. Nah. No. Nah. Do you want to go do that? No, I don't want to do anything with you. No, sorry. No. Right? Friends and family. And they learn. And if they don't learn, good riddance. Right? Good riddance. You didn't want them around anyway, right? But most of the time, they learn. Most of the time, when you say to somebody, listen, um, no, I don't want to do that with you. Why? Because you're a twat. Because you're a twat. Because you, you're always running me down. Every time I'm around you, I feel self-conscious and nervous and unhappy. So no, I don't want to spend any time with you. Goodbye. Right? That's what you do. And if they really value you, if they really want you, they will amend their behavior, realize how much of a dick they're being, and they'll come back and talk to you and want to work it out with you, right? If they leave and they think you're the problem, fuck them. No problem. Bye. All right? Especially if they attack your hobbies. If your hobby gives you joy, if your hobby in Warhammer gives you joy, how fucking dare they? How dare they? Right, mind you that they always seem to butter me up prior with praise for caring for my grandmother and then proceed to throw in intricately crafted verbal barbs afterwards. I normally brush off these conversations as I already have a plan and the funds to make it happen. With respect to my living situation, I've been living with my grandma for 10 years, being her caregiver and confidant 24-7. Mate, you're, you're, that's a strong man right there. It, 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 it's a strong man who, who gives up his dreams to, to, to basically look after the people around him. That's a man shit you're doing right there, right? It's, it's different. If you're hiding from the world because you don't want to get a job and you want to bum off your grandma, that's another thing. I don't think that's what you're doing. Because you just said you got like the finances to make it happen. You know, you know what I mean? Like you, you got your own job, you got your own things to do, that kind of thing. Anyway. I have been through the best and the worst of times, having been to birthdays, funerals, and emergency rooms by her side always. She loves me like her own son, and I force myself not to take a, not to take advantage of her like the relatives I mentioned previously. We I mean, shouldn't we need to force yourself to not take advantage of her? That sounds weird. If there are any chores, appointments, bills, repairs to the house that need to be done, I am the first to address and handle it in her stead. I am basically the Malogurst to her Horus. I love that. That's brilliant. I am basically the Malogurst to her Horus Lupercal, without warp taint or corruption. Had to had to throw in some Warhammer references here or there. I love that, mate. That's really good. Um, so, 
you are, you are her, you are her equerry, or whatever it's called. So back to the issue at hand. The hobby gets involved because these relatives often see me assembling miniatures, priming them outside in the yard, reading white dwarf slash codexes whenever they come around. The usual off-handed comments manifest and I just shrug it off and move on. A recent in uh, instance involved my aunt's daughter coming over unannounced to find grandma and myself sitting at the kitchen table doing our own things. She was expecting a five-star hotel service and what she got was our typical Saturday afternoon response of, hey, we'll cook in a few hours if you're hungry, there are leftovers in the fridge, help yourself. Displeased with the answer I gave, she started to prod into what I was doing. I was reading the build instructions for Primaris Aggressors. Oh, they're a pain in the arse to build as well. I explained to her what I was doing, and all I could see in her face was disbelief and utter contempt. It was a back and forth conversation of how I was wasting my time and money building and playing toy soldiers as a man in my late 20s. I responded to her calmly, void of any attitude. Look, this is, this is how I spend my free time after fulfilling my obligations to our grandma, the house, my job and personal business. I enjoy doing it and I see no issue with it. If it bothers you, you can look elsewhere. After all, I'm not forcing you to, I'm not forcing you to partake in my hobby. Dude, that's exactly what you should say. That's exactly what you should say. And you know what? And, and this this goes for, for women as well. If you're a dude and you're worried that a woman's not going to like you being into Warhammer, fucking own that shit. Own it. Just like, yeah, I do Warhammer. Yeah. It's artistic. It, let, it lets me get my creative side out. You know, it calms me down. It allows me to focus on something. It allows me to build something productive. That I can look at and say I built that, I created that, you know? Yeah, you know? Sometimes I do that rather than just playing video games for 19 hours a day. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes I want to create something. Sometimes I want to explore my, my creative side and, and build something with my own hands. Yeah, I like to do that. Bye, what do you like to do? I like to watch, I like to watch a reality television. Right, okay, cool. Like, I had this conversation with my mother the other day. She walked into the, to the, my room, and I'm playing Cyberpunk right now, right? And on on the screen of, of good old games, and on Steam as well, it tells you how long you've played a game for in the past, since you bought it, right? And on my Cyberpunk, it says I played it for like 196 hours since 2020, okay? And she was like, oh my god, that's such a long time, what a waste of time. And I said to her, listen, um... Each playthrough of this game is about 40 hours long, so I play it for about 2 hours a night for, say, 20 days, right? To chill out. 2 hours a night and that's it. How often do you watch EastEnders? How often do you watch soaps? How often do you watch things on the TV? Well, when I get home, like she said, well, when I get home, I watch it with my dinner and then I, I, I generally uh, chill out you know, that night, you know, watching TV. Cool. So call it 4 hours then. If you looked at your stats for, for watching the TV, it would be much higher than my stats for playing video games. Much higher. And I'm doing something productive. Why? Because I'm being inspired to write. I'm being inspired to partake in another world that's out there and get my my stress and my storytelling chops out of my system. In one. I'm so happy and fulfilled when I come off of playing a video game. I'm like, I've got a really good story, right? What do you do when you finish watching EastEnders? You go and watch something else and then you go to bed. Right? That's fine. That's fine. I do it for two or three hours a night and I have fun. It's my de-stressor. Everybody has got the thing that they like to do. And you don't let people come into your house. Because my, my mum had, had, like, had like good um, good intentions. She wasn't having a go. She wasn't like saying, how dare you do it. No, she was just like, oh my god, that, that's a long time. Like, well, no, it isn't. Not compared to what you do. You know? It absolutely isn't. That's the same thing you should say to this woman here. Yeah, I spend some of my time doing this. What do you do for, when you're chilling out? You know, I watch TV. I listen to music. Cool, cool, awesome. Well, this is my watching TV, listening to music then. Just leave me alone. And if and if they just own it, man. If, if they don't want to know, just own it like you did there. Especially if it's a woman. She goes, why, why are you doing that? And it's a prospective woman you want to be with. Just say, yeah, like, explain why you like doing it. So if you don't like it, fucking jog on. Off you go. Anyway, after that, we enjoyed a quiet weekend together. A few days later, her father, my aunt's husband, messaged my sister, 
ranting about how I wasn't a good host and I should be more welcoming. After all, my name was not on the deed of the house according to him, but neither is his because he is not in the will. Yes, I know where all the, the important documents are because my grandmother asked me to help out when the time comes. I'm still bothered by this nonsense. I understand opinions will always be said amongst family and relatives, but it's just plain inconsiderate. I have been taking care of my grandmother without fail for all this time, for all this time, so why now? I'd love to hear your take on this. I'm open to anything constructive that I can put I, I can do on my end. The content is fantastic and I agree with your material is very much like a finishing a school for nerds like me. Um, hopefully there is no glaring grammar errors. It's been a while since I had to write something as expository as this. Best urch. Mate, I, I would have given you the advice, so I, I can skip over that bit. But yeah, don't just get on with it, mate. Just get on with your life. Get on with your life. But you, remember this. I don't care if they're your family or not. You get to select who's in your life. You do. You absolutely do. Right? If you're helping out your grandmother and she, she loves you being there and you're, you're a force for good in her life, you can, you can get the measure of a man by how he treats people who are weaker than him. Who are lower on the totem pole than him. And that sounds weird. You know, because old people, old people are there. Old people are old. That that they need, they need you to to help them out. You can get the measure of a man by how he treats people who are vulnerable around him. And if you're there taking care of her and you've got a job, dude, mate, mate, you you've earned the right to tell everybody who doesn't like your hobby to go fuck themselves. All right. If they don't want to be around, don't have them around. No problem. Or or vacate the space. Say hey. I, I'm, I've got my own space in the house. I'm gonna do gonna do my hobby in there. Just gonna do it in there, right? Anyway, that's what I would do. Uh, Ra uh, Raving Dave says, "Hey North, an overly stressed current Games Workshop manager here. He wanted to write in and talk about a few times in my career so far that I've been like, uh, what? As you can imagine, there are a few anecdotes here. So let's dive in, shall we?" <laughs> God, I've just read the start of this one. Okay, um, number one, anecdote number one. <laughs> Jake's mother. All right. So, in my local store, there is a lovely young lad called Jake, a really good Iron Hands player with a cracking taste in music. His mother liked to come into the store with him every now and again, and I could tell. She was very, very, very hot, but was kind of, but she kind of buried it all under all of the pressures of being a mum. You know what I mean? Baggy jeans, hoodies that probably belonged to her husband, no makeup, she looked like she had little sleep, that kind of thing. When she got divorced though, she immediately started str striding into the store with skin tight jeans high heels and a cute ACDC, uh, ACDC t-shirt with a leather jacket. Jaws were on the floor. Games stopped. Shopping stopped. The whole shebang. This went on every other day for weeks. <laughs> oh my god. This girl wants attention. Jesus Christ. Uh, somebody put her across the knee already. Jesus. She brought the store full of young men to an absolute standstill every time she came in and I knew she was, she was actually loving what she was doing and eventually I had to say something. I pulled her aside and told her two things. Number one, she looked absolutely amazing and number two, every time she came into the store looking like that, I got no business done because she was that distracting. I told her I was sorry if she thought I was being a bit weird, but yeah, I need to make money and she's killing me here. <laughs> At least you're being honest. At least you're being honest. I was expecting her to be angry or for her to think I was coming on to her or something, but she just laughed and told me she was sorry and that she'd tone it down in future. Since then, she's been coming in with her baggy jeans and t-shirt. A compromise, I guess. <laughs> oh my god. The amount of blue balls in that store. Anecdote number two. So, another mother, by the name of Lisa, uh, headed into my store with her son, a decent lad, and her youngest, her other son, who was too young for the hobby, but was generally harmless and didn't make any noise anyway. One day, 
I was snowed under as it was a Saturday, so I'm running around the store getting stuff done. You know how it goes. One of my regulars approaches me, white in the face, and tells me to come to the corner of the store where the paints are. There is Lisa's youngest son, on his own, drinking paint. Oh, shit. Yes, drinking paint. He's three years old. I go into a fucking panic and call his mother over and she tries to leave. I tell her that basically it's company policy that I have to call an ambulance. If she leaves, I will be in big trouble. She asks me how long it will be. I check the paints and find that they are not toxic, but they can react badly with people when ingested, especially if that person is, is of a young age. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Thank God he wasn't drinking the inks, that's all I'm going to say. The ambulance was there 30 minutes later, and they checked him over. He was fine, and the family headed home. Two days later, Lisa headed in with a big cake for me for taking care of her lad, which was nice. She then spoilt the cake by telling me her son's next shite was a colour... was coloured a rather orcish green. <laughs> and that she had a picture of it. I declined to view said picture. What a fucking creature. Oh, no. Here's, here's the other thing as well, guys. So if you're ever wondering why... Games Workshop managers don't let you uh, use paints that aren't Games Workshop Citadel paints, right? Uh, the reason why is because we know what's in the Games Workshop paints. So if this happens in my store and somebody takes like a Vallejo paint or an Army Painter paint and they drink it, I don't know what's in that paint. Alright? Yes, I could Google it, but I am not covered by insurance or by, you know, liability or anything like that if, if somebody's drinking a paint in my store that I don't sell. That means I haven't looked after them. I'm now liable for their injuries and their and their illness from resulting from drinking the paint, right? So, but if somebody comes to me and says, "My son has just drank a you know some Blood Angels red or some corn red or whatever," I can go, "Ah, I know what's in that paint. Uh, it's not toxic, but I do need to call the ambulance so they can check him over. No problem, right? You, you can speak from a bit of authority there because you know it's not toxic. You know exactly what's in the paint." Um, you can't if your if your paint is not Games Workshop Citadel. So it's one of the only things that is nitpicking from Games Workshop that I actually kind of agree with. But you know, anyway, moving on. So, anecdote number three, and probably the biggest one. I just wanted to say this, North. I hate the customers who come in looking to badmouth Games Workshop. Ooh, controversial. I get it, dude. Some things the company does are not things you like. I get that totally. I even support your right to write to the company and talk to them if you can. What you couldn't, what you should not do is come into my store and shout in my face about things the company does. That is what a guy called James did, with the most recent issue happening only a couple of months ago. Or into the summer. Okay, cool. <clears throat> it's a random Thursday night, and I'm getting ready for the store gaming night. And in comes James, a lot taller than me, walking into the store as it's nice and quiet, and heads straight for me as I'm setting up a gaming board ready for the lads in the Veterans Night Thursday night rush. He tells me he wants to file a complaint about the fact that the rules are being reset again in 10th edition only three months after he bought the 9th edition set in this very store. I told him, verbatim, and I quote, That really sucks, man. Uh, well, to be fair, I had no idea there would be a new edition this quickly. I thought it would be next year at least, before it came out. Anyway, all that, all that is being released in a few months is the Leviathan box set, which is not really a starter box set. I mean, it is, I guess but there will be actual starter box sets available after that for new people. You're also doing Eldar, aren't you? Which are going to be very powerful in 10th edition, man, I'm telling you. He then said, I don't give a fuck about that. Don't try blowing smoke up my arse and lying to me. Well, wow. okay. I replied, well, first, dude, don't use language like that in my store, please. 
Secondly, I'm not lying. Nor was I lying to you when I when I told you that night when I sold you ninth edition. Sorry, when I told you getting into this hobby was an amazing decision. I truly I truly believe it was and still is. He balled his fists by his side, thinking I was giving him some sort of company rhetoric or something. He said, I'm not paying for 10th edition as a box set. You can go fuck yourself, he seethed. Wow. No one is making you, I said, holding my hands up. You are, though, he screamed. By bringing it out, I will need to pay again to play the new game. I explained about the free rules and all that stuff. He didn't want to know, though, and told me I worked for a company of robbers and that I should fuck right off. At this point, people w people are coming in for the veterans gaming evening, so I'm embarrassed to say the least. He heads out, swearing that he'll never buy anything from the store ever again, and I make a silent note to ban him if he ever came back with a similar attitude again. I don't need that shit at my work, it's stressful enough. I'd love to say this was an isolated incident, but it's not. I get at least one of these people coming into the store to lay into me once a month, at least. Guys, please don't shout at your local Games Workshop staff for things the company does. We just sell you this shit if you want it. We have no bearing on the decisions they make, and they couldn't give less of a shit what we think about the direction the company is going in. I have many more. Want to hear them? Just say the word. Cheers, Dave. Yeah, send them in, man. Send them in. That'd be awesome. And you're completely, completely within your rights to say that. It is something that I subscribe to as well. If I'm a Games Workshop manager, whatever Games Workshop does is not my fault. I am here to sell your models, right? If you don't like a Disney movie, you don't go into Disneyland and start shouting at the people in the suits, do you? No. What are they going to fucking do about it? Right? Exactly. Exactly my point. So don't do it with Games Workshop as well. These dudes are there just earning a paycheck, and it's not even a good paycheck. It's a terrible paycheck. It's kind of a borderline illegal paycheck. But, dude, don't shout at these people. They're overworked, underpaid, and they don't need it. And number, and number two, they can't do anything about it anyway. They can't do anything about it anyway. Any issue you have, I can't do anything about it as Games Workshop manager. I can't. Right? What am I going to do? Phone up the design team. Uh, Dave from Birmingham said he, he, he doesn't like the numb ways that the, that the saves are working now. Uh, can you change it, please? No, I'm not going to fucking do that. Right? I'm not even going to take that call. Tell him to piss off. I'll lose my job. All right? We can't help you with that. We can help you sell your models. And we can help you play some games. Most of us, anyway. Who are nice. We can't do anything else. We literally cannot do anything else, all right? Yeah, but Dave, yeah, send me more in, man. That'd be really, really cool. I love you a long time. I will speak to you tomorrow for a lovely bit of a rant here on the side tomorrow. It should be a good one, because tomorrow we are discussing what your Warhammer Fantasy Battles army says about you. It's our first one of that series in Warhammer Fantasy Battles. Can't wait. Looking forward to it. Love you a long time. See you then. Bye now.